hey guys welcome back to my youtube channel in this video i will be making a you know i never really quite decided what it was moon kitsune uh the fantasy fox like oh it's honestly whatever you want to call it <laughs> but yes i'll be making that in this video and you'll notice that I'm not showing you guys how I sculpt the head like I normally do. Usually that's the first thing I do in my videos. But this particular piece has a resin cast of a sculpture that I made a long time ago. Now if you're wondering what the heck are you talking about, that basically just means that a long time ago I sculpted a head and then I molded it in silicone and then casted it in resin. And I'll um, insert some clips here showing you that general process you want to build up walls around the sculpture you want to mold and then you make silicone together and pour it over that and then you mix resin and then pour it into the now vacant hole in your silicone mold when you pull the clay head out it's a whole process and I do have videos of it on my patreon and if anyone is interested but you know for this one you guys can look at previous videos if you're looking to sculpt something and learn how to sculpt a head or something like that but I am showing how to sculpt the feet and for the feet since they're so small and I didn't want them to just break right away or break off the wire I'm using instamorph and what instamorph is is these little plastic pellets that you melt in really hot water and they become moldable and then when they have um, cooled off they turn back into a very hard plastic so they're very durable and break resistant. The only issue is it's hard to get any detail out of them. So you wanna make sure that you're moving quickly and that if you need to, um, like say if you're not moving fast enough and stuff, you can always just throw it back into the hot water and reheat it and start again. It's very versatile in that way. Um, so it's perfect for horns and, and claws and like little tiny feet and little tiny details and stuff. So it's, it's great for things like that. So skipping right along, once all the uh, feet have cooled off and I've attached the resin head to the armature, which armature made feet is also on my Patreon. I don't record it as often, mostly just because it's, the way I do it, it, it'd, it'd be really hard to film because I'm all over the place when trying to make it, but I took some photo tutorials if you guys are interested like that. But if not, I know Bubbly Leaf here on YouTube also um, shows how she makes her armatures and stuff, so that's also an option for you guys. But yeah, once all that's done, it's time to work on building up the body, and for that I use quilt batting. And I just buy really big rolls of it, you can buy it at most craft stores, you can even get it at like Walmart, and I cut it into really long strips, and then I'll slowly wrap it around the body over and over again until it's built up to the thickness that I want. And when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you're not building up quite as thick as you actually want the final body to be, because whatever fabric you're going to add, be it fur, or leather, or whatever you're going to use, is going to add a little bit of girth to it so you want to make sure you don't build it up as quite as large as you want in the quilt batting or else it'll end up being too big when you go to sew it And here we come to my janky method of sewing, but it, I can't like pattern worth a damn. So this is just the way I do it. I'll lay the, the doll leg side up and then I'll cut a piece of fur the entire length of the doll, making sure that I'm not coming too close to the sides of the body. And then I will cut a slit where I want each leg to slide through, making sure it stays nice and tight against the body. Um, and then I'll just trim down the sides until it fits nice and slug. I don't really like overlap, but I, don't, I want it really tight against the body. And then I'll just sew straight down the middle with a normal basic stitch. It's always hard to like articulate what I'm doing. So this is where the video just really helps explain like exactly what I'm doing. 
Um, and then I'll repeat the same process for the legs where I'll cut a piece of fabric the entire length of the leg, trim it to size so it's nice and snug, and then sew starting from the feet, working my way up towards the body, and then to join the leg and body fabric together, I will use a ladder stitch. Now, because I am crazy and decided to give this thing five tails, I am not going to hand sew each tail because I'm pretty sure I will lose my mind. So what I'm doing is I'm tracing the length of each wire um, for the, the doll because I cut it into like three different lengths. And then I'm tracing those wires and I'm going to make like a sort of makeshift pattern where I'm just drawing out how I want the tails um, to be, how thick or how big I want them to be. So I'm being mindful of how big they are in relation to each other because I don't want... I'd already ended up being kind of massive in the end. It, it's kind of okay. I, I think it looks good, but I'm just trying to be mindful of that and to make sure that the um, tip of the tail and the end of the tail aren't so different in size so that I can flip it back out once I'm done sewing it. And once I figured out all the general patterning that I want, I'm tracing that onto my fabric and I'm just using a pencil. I'm sure you can find like chalk or something. It's a lot easier when you're not doing this on black fur. Like if you're just doing it on any type of other color fur, you can normally see what you're doing. I'm using these watercolor pencils because they actually show up and I can see what I'm doing. But once I trace it out, I'm going to cut it out. And you want to make sure, if you're going to machine sew this anyway, like I'm going to do, um, you want to make sure you don't cut right against the line that you made. You want to give a seam allowance, usually a quarter inch around the whole thing so that um, you have some leeway when you machine sew it. If you're going to hand sew it, then by all means, just cut on the edge and sew down the dotted line and you're good to go. But I will be machine sewing because, my God, I'll go crazy. And then as I did in the last video, I am pinning the two pieces all together and then I'm just going to sew it with my sewing machine, who I swear one day I'm going to get better at and like do fancy stuff with, but today is not that day. <laughs>
Um, to stuff the now turned tails, uh, I just took some polyfill, which is pretty much the same thing as quilt batting. So um, say you don't have or you don't want to buy polyfill because you already have quilt batting. If you just shred the quilt batting, it's the same thing. It's just torn up quilt batting. That's all it is. So I'm just taking little chunks of that and I'm pushing it into the tail with my tweezers. I have these really long tweezers that I bought from Amazon and they're perfect for this. They're a godsend because my fingers definitely cannot reach all the way down there. <laughs> But yeah, I'm just stuffing it all the way, making sure um, there's no lumps or anything and that it's all nice and smooth. Now you can't really see what I'm doing, so I'm just gonna explain it here. I'm attaching the tails to the wire armature and I'm just using a ladder stitch around the butt <laughs> to join the tails to the booty. <laughs> and once all the sewing is done, it is now time to trim up the body. I always like to trim my bodies down a little bit because I always like thinner bodies. And the fastest way for me to do that is to use a pet shaver. It's a great tool to help get all the bulk fur off very quickly and very smoothly. smoothly. Like it looks, it doesn't look jagged. Like, like if you were to do it with scissors, it's a lot harder. Not impossible, because I have done it with just scissors before, but it's a lot easier when you have the pet shaver to just get all that off quickly and to make it still look nice as you're doing it. And it comes with a bunch of different guards so that you can trim down the fur in different um, lengths wherever you would like. So like usually I use the shorter guards for around the body, especially around the torso. And then for the tails, I'll leave it a bit longer so I won't use as short of a guard. But even um, with a pet shaver, I do like to go back in with scissors, especially around the legs or, or anything like that, that the pet shaver might have missed or just can't really get a good angle on. So I always go back in with scissors just to clean everything up. And then here I am doing some painting. Uh, sorry, my, my camera dies a lot throughout this video, so there is a few things that um, I didn't realize I, I missed to record, so you're only seeing me paint it black, but um, I'm using acrylic paint. You can use pretty much any type of acrylic paint you would like. Don't think that you have to stick to one brand because there are a lot of good uh, variations out there. You just need to find what you like. Like specifically for this one, I'm using folk art. The enamel one specifically because I find that it, it has a nice coverage um, and it doesn't chip as easily as other paints might but it's pretty good in that regard but you can use any acrylic paint that you have on hand and then it's time for airbrushing and for my airbrushing I use a dual action gravity feed airbrush and that is a lot of words just to say it's a pressure controlled airbrush that you put paint in from the top <laughs> And um, when I'm painting on black fur, I always start out with white. I airbrush the entire thing white wherever I want color to go, so that way it shows a bit better and it uh, is a little bit more vibrant than it would be if I just painted it um, on solid black with no white. And as long as you're keeping your layers light and you're brushing constantly, you have a much less chance of making your fur uh, sticky or textured. Um, so as long as you're just being a little light-handed, don't go too heavy, take your time with it, and uh, build it up to how you like, and then you're good to go. Now the last thing I did, which is unfortunately where my camera started cutting off, um, is to do the markings. Now I wanted really bright markings for this. So what I did was I took a paintbrush and I took uh, my bright paint 
and I just started to paint onto the fur. And you wanna make sure that you're going the fur direction because if you're going against the fur direction, it won't paint very well. So just make sure you're going the fur direction and then um, brush it out when it's nice and dry and stuff. And, and you can create really cool markings and stuff that maybe the airbrush just can't really get. once you've done all of that it's done <laughs> um thank you guys so much for watching the uh entire length of this video because i know my videos are long um i'm just going to give you guys a heads up now this piece is actually going to be auctioned off it was a collab with me and another artist she designed the creature and i made the physical art doll for it and so we'll be auctioning it off together so I'll have all the details for that in the description down below, like dates or where it's going to be. It is going to be on Instagram. So um, if you're not following me on there, make sure you're following me. Uh, it's at KP Creations everything. Like my YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. It's, it, it's all KP Creations. But um, yeah, so I'll have all the information for you for that if you're looking to purchase this one. Um, and then until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. I'm trying to take video. <laughs> oh, damn, dork. <laughs>